We are officially getting closer to the April season, which is where we start a ton of seeds. But here in March, I'm going to let you know what seeds you should start. And this is again, regardless of your zone, because zones don't matter as much as last frost dates do. And ultimately speaking, a week or two, four weeks, give or take, it's not going to make a huge difference. So if I say it can be started in March, that can be the beginning of March, that could be the end of March. And the lower you are zone wise, or the farther away your last frost it is, the closer to end of March you want to get. And the sooner or higher zone you're in, then you would want to go for the beginning of March, just guidelines. So first, we're going to start off with flowers. Now, these are petite flowers, and these are more specific for the first round of flowers. Flowers are one of those plants that you want to seriously consider doing uh, wave planting with, because if you start them every two weeks or every month, you'll have a continuous bloom cycle, and you won't have kind of straggly looking plants or things like that. Anytime you see really nice full plants, most most cases, there's some out there that's, that's not the case, they're wave planted or they're continually revamped and added to over the summer. The first one is alyssum. Alyssum, if you did not know what this is, it is very pretty. It kind of looks like a baby's breath. The white version of it does. Um, there's purple versions, kind of like pinky purple. And bumblebees love alyssum. I, if you plant alyssum, the bees go crazy for it. It's like the pollinator hotspot I find. So I do like starting alyssum regardless um, because of that reason. The next one is milkweed. So milkweed, if you did not know, is like a butterfly's paradise. Right now would be the time to start that. And if you started it sooner, you'd be able to give pollinators some food prior to the rest of the bloom cycles that you would see on dandelions, etc., and so forth. So it may be the first option that some of these little buggers have to get what they need. There are two kind of perennials you could go with, and that is columbine and yarrow. So yarrow is, I think it's such a pretty plant. I think it's so unique. Uh, that is one perennial you could go with. And then columbine is a perennial. I So they're pretty, don't get me wrong. The flowers are super unique on columbines. The part that I don't like is the flower cycle is very fast. So it's one of the first blooms you will get in the spring and then the flowers kind of die off and then it's mostly greenery. So if you like the look of columbines, just keep in mind that that is not a full, like that's not gonna keep going all summer. It's only gonna be that first little bit of spring. If you are doing snapdragons, right now is a great time to start those because you can actually deadhead or pinch off the tops to get more flower structure to it. And then the other two, which are a little bit too soon, you could actually push these off into April. But if you're really itching to get something started, that would be marigold and geraniums. So those two can be started kind of in and around the end of March. I would say it's a little bit too soon for them. But like I said, if you're itching for to get something in the ground and those are what you have on hand, you could start those in March. Next on the list is herbs. So we're not quite at the point where we want to start a lot of herbs, but we are getting close and there are some herbs you can start now and then obviously utilize as fresh eats until you actually transplant them outdoors. So that includes chives, lemon balm, stevia, thyme, rosemary, sage, and mint. And there are so many different versions of mint. There are so many different versions of sage. So you can start anything that falls kind of in the family of mint, in the family of sage. Rosemary, you're starting to get a little bit late. And seam with lavender, you're starting to get a little bit late. But if you intend to grow those, maybe start them here right at the beginning of March, and you will be just fine. And if you followed along with the video I did on lavender and rosemary, I specifically gave you a hack on how to start these seeds kind of in the fridge and that's with a light and there's really good results with that I find. So you could technically, if you wanted to uh, take those out and then put them in a warm space to allow them to germinate. All of these that I'm mentioning, if you choose to start now a little bit earlier, I would not utilize a heat mat or any sort of heat source because it will just quicken the germination process. Part of the reason for why we would start some of these in March is so that we 
don't have to utilize the heat map. We have time still to allow the, the seeds to germinate, etc., and so forth. And if you are at all confused on what potting soil to use and how to start seeds, I also have a video on that, so go check that out. It is a complete guide of everything you need to know, whether you should use cells or blockers and soil, you name it, so go check that out. The next one is your fruits and vegetables you can start. So asparagus is one, if you're starting from seed, you could start right now slow grower. I mean, you're not going to get harvest off of it this year, but it is definitely something you could start by seed right now. The next one is artichokes. Artichokes, I know some of you are saying like, that's your crazy plant because we were joking about crazy plants. The, the geek crew was, we we're joking about crazy plants in the February video. The plants you should never grow, but you do anyways. Now, those are the February ones. Artichoke is one of those that I have done in the past here in zone three. And right now, if that is like your crazy plant, you can actually start that here uh, in March and get some really good results. So artichoke is one that you could start at this moment. If you miss the onions, you are like, you're getting a little bit long in the tooth, especially if you get more, like ones that need more days to harvest, but leeks is onion flavor, uh, not quite onion texture, but it, can be seasoned and used in the same way you would use an onion. So leeks are something you could start here in March. Next up is celery. So celery is when you could start in February. Celery is when you could start in March and a little bit into April even, depending on what your goals are. So celery, very tiny seeds, definitely something you should give a shot uh, in and around this time. I've had troubles with celery in the past, particularly aphids taking out my celery. If you have an aphid problem, you will have to put some preventative measures in place just to make sure that everything's hunky-dory because they can get kind of grody as the season goes on. If you're starting rhubarb from seed or if you're starting rhubarb from root mass. Now, if you're starting from seed, start it right now. Take advantage of it because you got lots of time to get everything to grow up and be happy. So rhubarb is one you could start from seed here and now. And then the last two is peppers and tomatoes. So peppers in particular, if you're going to do hot peppers, this is the time when I will say put the heat mat down because you want germination to happen a little bit quicker. And if you're doing sweet bell peppers, anything like that, do those here and now. You don't have to necessarily use heat with them. So you got, still got a lot of time. So don't worry about that. But March is the time to start them. Tomatoes. Now, this is for those of you that want an early harvest and you want to transplant or you have the gusto to transplant very large tomatoes. I personally, I'm gonna tell you to hold off. I do not start mine until April. The reason for that is because Tomatoes that are overgrown tend to transplant poorly. They get some pretty severe transplant shock. And the result of that transplant shock is blossom drop and almost like stunted growth. The plant will stop growing, kind of go into like almost a pseudo dormancy for a few weeks. And then once it recovers, it will grow again. So you really don't get ahead in my opinion. You kind of, everything comes to harvest at pretty much the exact same time. So rather than, and, and you get more flowers if you you take your time with the plant and you do it at the right, you put it out as a small plant, not a huge plant. So I'm gonna hold off till April. It's completely up to you though. If you wanna do it, go ahead, get her done. Um, no heat, I wanna use heat with this. And again, make sure you have the space and the resources to be able to keep very large plants happy and alive. I wanna thank you guys for watching. Let me know what seeds you're going to be starting in March down in the comments down below. And always remember the comment section, the geek crew is much more intelligent than I am because they know specifically what works in their zone or their city and et cetera and so forth. So if you need opinions or ideas, go in the comments. There's people from all around the world and they will tell you exactly what to do in your area because that is what works. Everyone has their own microclimate no one no one knows their area better than yourselves so thanks for watching i'll talk to you next time